It's time for Idle Talk from King's Auto Repair in West Reading. Got a question about your vehicle? Give us a call at 610-374-8800 or 888-401-0459. So let's get started with Idle Talk from King's Auto Repair. Here's Tom and Ashley. We're back. Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to Idle Talk. I am Ashley. And I'm Tom. And we are here on 8.30 a.m. WEU. We are from King's Auto Repair, and we are Idle Talk. And we're talking about cars. Uh, We can talk about anything you want, just as long as it has to do with car. Uh, Give us a call, 610-374-8800. 888-401-0459. We're taking your calls and we are also live on Facebook. So navigate out to Facebook, look for King's Auto Repair and you will get notifications when we go live so you can see our beautiful faces for radio. And uh, if you have any questions and you don't want to call in, you can always just write it in the chat bar and we can try to address it. Uh, well, as we're as we're yakking here about mm-hmm. car stuff, so uh, I don't even have my phone out. Uh, so it has my notes on it. So I don't know where Tommy wanted to start. And as you start, I'm gonna take my phone out. Okay, here. go right ahead. Make sure you turn the ringer off too. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> it's usually you know. Well, somebody I am dials so I am so muy, muy popular. Uh, you yeah. know, I get so many calls. Yeah, well, yeah the spam ones. Well, yeah, everybody's, exactly. Everybody's popular. <laughs> you know, you get you get the spam the spam calls. Right. You know, they want to sell you a warranty. The IRS is after you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's there's so many of them. All, all and the good like, stuff. You like, yeah, right. Yeah. First of all, the IRS doesn't call. No. They send letters. You know, that's a really good point. <laughs> Anyone who's listening, if the IRS actually calls you, they're not really the IRS, okay? Nah. So you can, like, someone actually, I did have an IRS call, um, air quoting call, and I got him so mad that he said expletives to me <laughs> oh. and then hung up. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. But he said a lot of the expletives and naughty things to me, and, yeah. then, he, and then he hung up, so... So, yeah, and don't give any of those people money. So. That's right. Okay, good. That's right. So, so do, you, do you want to start with the oil change stuff? Sure, sure, okay. sure. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a listener by the name of John asked a question through Facebook, and he said, my 2014 Camry recommended 10,000-mile oil changes with synthetic oil, and his Nissan NV200 recommends 5K with regular oil. He said, what's the difference? So I really didn't know off the top of my head, and I didn't want to speak out of turn without looking anything up. Right. So what I did was I did a little sleuthing on this because I wanted to know, you know, all this information's out there. It's online. All you have to do is is go and search for the owner's manual for that car. Right. So I wanted to – so it, go into it, but the they can change how they want oil yes. changes intervals to be yes and and probably the most notorious one for this was gm mm. they changed their oil changes they came out in like the mid 2000s and like late the mid 2000s there in like 20 2008 to like 2012 and they said hey you can go 10,000 mile on uh, 10,000 mile on uh, oil changes and they started having all kinds of engine troubles, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of timing chain issues and a lot of like uh, check engine lights and cars not running right and all kinds of other crazy things. So they actually went and reprogrammed the cars back to 7,500 miles and they don't have near as many issues as they had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, still having issues, but not like it was like every every car before. Now it's like maybe one out of 10. So definitely a lot better. But, uh, you know, asked about, you know, what, why the difference in the oil changes. So I wanted to go look and just make sure, you know, what a 2014 Camry actually recommended Mm -hmm. and what the Nissan actually recommended. Mm -hmm. So I went out online today and I looked them up and the 2014 Camry actually recommends 5,000 mile oil changes. Right. So there's no difference whether you use synthetic or regular oil in it. So they so just have five thousand miles, five thousand miles, or six months change oil. Oh, okay. So, so they want you to service it every five thousand miles or six months. So, and that was their their stand on it. 
So I went, I thought, well, let's go look at the Nissan. And the Nissan actually had uh, called for regular 530 oil, just had to meet a specification on the back. And the specification was SN. You can read that on the back. That is our probably the second most up-to-date oil that's out there right now is the SN. What does uh, that mean? What does SN well, mean? The S on the so every every oil's rated. <laughs> okay. So they all have like a seal on them, and it's from the American Petroleum Institute. It's okay. your API rating. Oh, okay. So they rate it for how like how good the quality of oil is. So and what's been happening with oil over the years is they've been taking a lot of stuff out that causes cancers and that type of thing. Okay. Stuff that's not good for the environment. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. So all these manufacturers, they have like a spec on the oil. And what ends up happening is as these oils progress, they give them a new specification. SN came out, oh, I think around like 2012, 2013, somewhere in there. And it was like the latest oil. And it was recommended in a lot of new cars, newer cars, that you weren't supposed to use older oils in it. And they actually started having problems with these engines that were called direct injection engines. And they had the auto stop start feature. And once again, it was a uh, GM had this issue with um, some of their smaller cars that had the auto stop start. You come to a stop sign and or stop light and you'd pause there and the car would shut off. And then as it would start, the engine would blow. And what was actually happening was yeah definitely a problem because it wasn't just like it it was like big pieces like, like totally blown total, apart okay like oil so not coolant, just like seizing everything. it's yeah. like yeah like so what was actually happening is the oil droplets from this oil were actually getting by the uh, the piston rings which actually seal the piston to the actual engine block. And what was happening is you get these little oil droplets in in there, and they were actually lighting the oil droplets on fire before the piston got into the right place to be able to produce the power to turn it over. So as the piston comes up, as it comes up and it kind of reaches the top of as far as its travel, mm-hmm. it compresses the gas, it compresses the gasoline and the and the air, and then the spark plug ignites, and then it pushes it back down. Okay. But it keeps going in that same rotation. So, but so, it was... But when these oil droplets got in there, they actually, as the piston came up, it lit it, it would light the gasoline and oil, gasoline and air mixture on fire, and push the piston the wrong way. Oh. It would push it the opposite way because it would do like it too early. Nano droplets, mm-hmm. but a lot Real of them. T- exactly. Little itty bitty. So And it caused a lot of problems. So now the latest specification is S N plus. So and a lot of manufacturers have switched over to that within the last like two years. Okay. Because it caused so many problems and they said, Oh, this is so great, this oil's so good and then they had those problems. Huh. And it traced back to the actual engine oil. Wow. So using non, so a lot of those older cars actually that have that technology actually need the newer spec oil, even though that owner's manual calls for the older stuff. Well, that just kind of goes to show is what, what I had said initially is just because the printed owner's manual has X mile, cha- you know, interval mile chain oil changes doesn't necessarily mean that that's current. So you really should check, go on to the website and check the, the dealer website yeah. or the, the manufacturer website because they, they change and update things. Usually, though, when they do that, they'll issue a recall and they'll okay. send you something in the mail to okay. say, hey, we did this, we changed it. Okay, so. well, that's good. They don't just do it kind of willy-nilly. It's no. pretty serious when they do stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Okay, so, do you want to talk to Yeah, her? let's talk to Irene and we'll right. come back to this. Okay, hi, Irene. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? All right. I just have a stupid question. No, it's not a stupid question. I have a sensor on my car. It's uh, 2001. You know, I haven't driven it that much, but I have noticed, like, it's supposed to show, like, the speed limit signs. Yeah. And 
It doesn't show all of them. I'm just curious, it, do the speed limit signs have to have a chip in it to transmit or, you know, what's it's, going what, on there? What year is it? 2001. No, I'm sorry. 2021. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Because I'm like, I don't think 2021's had that technology. I'm sorry. That's okay. And I know what you're talking about because Tom and I just went on a vacation and we got a, we rented a Ford Explorer and it does have those that had, remember Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, look, it has the speed limit sign on there Uh so I know how fast I should go, you know, so I know what you're talking about, but I don't know how that happens. Tommy does. It's actually programmed into the maps in a computer. Oh. So as okay. they go around and they go down all the streets, it'll pick up the different signs and you're, they actually program it into the map in the computer and, and then there's like a GPS in your car. So it knows your location and what road you're driving on and it tells you just by the GPS location where, like what the speed limit should be. Okay, so that's sort of... So I you, had just gotten a letter about selling my home, mm-hmm. and they said, your picture, you know, this isn't, we didn't go buy your house, this is from Google Maps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't my house. Oh, really? <laughs> and that's one of, this is one of the areas where I'm get, not getting that speed limit mm-hmm. sign. Oh, because, okay, so. So that would make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so if you ever go on to Google Maps, and you go to the satellite version, and then you look for the little man down at the bottom, and you click on him. Um, that'll show you the roads that they've actually driven on. So it'll highlight the roads. So I know that like um, there's roads near where we live. We're out in um, where do we live? Rockland Township. <laughs> 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 that they haven't. <laughs> I, we we have like Rockland Township, Fleetwood School, you know, like to, whatever school, different schools. Like anyway, so but there's roads that they haven't mapped. So you, yeah, that would that would make a lot of sense that they haven't mapped it, so they don't know what the speed limit is. Okay, I was just curious because yeah. it does it sometimes, and sometimes it's like okay. yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like take a guess. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yep. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you. Thanks, Irene. Mm-hmm. All, All right. right. Good night. Bye. That's a good question because I was all because when we rented that Ford Explorer, I'm like, hey, look, it has the stop sign, it has the mm-hmm. speed limit sign on it, <laughs> and then it changed speed limit, and then it came up again with like the new speed. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, hey, that's it cool. Just, <laughs> yeah, so a lot of it's integrated with Google Maps, and they've they basically drive around everywhere and record all the different things, and one of the things they record is the speed limit. Yeah. On a certain road. So when they Makes see sense. a speed limit sign, you know, they put in that this is the speed limit. So yeah. your car, um, these new cars are, they're connected. Yeah. They all have Whether uh, you like GPS, it or not. <laughs> yeah, they all have GPS trackers in them. Yeah. A lot of them have, uh, they actually use the cell phone networks. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've been doing that for a long time. It's just that, you know, nowadays there's a lot more information going back and forth than there were years ago. Yeah. Uh, GM did it with OnStar back in the 90s. Yeah. It was and, revolutionary. Yeah. And a lot of manufacturers were doing it now. And with the um, advent of the, I believe it's, uh, I, I saw a, a thing that said one of the cell phone networks is shut. They're shutting it down. I want to say it was the, it's the uh, 3G. Three, I think it's the 3G. Yeah. But don't quote me on that. I don't exactly remember. But they're shutting down one of the, the cell phone networks to make room for the new cell phone networks. Right, right. And uh, when, they, when they're when they doing this, it's actually a lot of car manufacturers up until like 2019 were still using that as one of their uh, mm-hmm. their data points and what they were using. So as they shut that off, all those cars are going to become disconnected from all this stuff. So right. well, kind of interesting. Let's take a break. We mm-hmm. have We had a question come in on... No. Okay, and then uh, we'll be right back after these messages. And now let's get back to Tom and Ashley with Idle Talk from King's Auto Repair. 
And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Ashley. And I'm Tom. And we are here on 8.30 a.m. WEEU. We are from King's Auto Repair, and we are Idle Talk. And we, did you want to address the? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you want to read so, it off. Because uh, I just wanted to make sure I could pull the, the part up in the book here <laughs> in enough time. So why it sounded. I am going to read this verbatim out of the book, and it is dry. Yeah. So let's, okay. So <laughs> a gentleman um, uh, wrote in on our Facebook he says, what is the law on light bars in the front of vehicles? Because this is kind of near and dear to my heart because you see a lot of these light bars and they're very bright. And just because they sell them on Amazon doesn't mean they're legal. So, okay. So Tommy is going to read out of the Pennsylvania state. Had What's the name of this document? This is publication number 45. Oh, it is a state safety exciting. inspection manual. If you would like to read some of the driest readings, <laughs> um, I suggest it. You can fall asleep. Um, please please try to stay awake as I read this uh, paragraph here. Let me there's, get some water. There's uh, eight bullet points in this paragraph. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, so, ready, go. So, a lot of the lights you currently see on the road right now are off-road lamps. They are not made to be driving lamps. They are not made to be fog lamps. And that is because they cast a beam in a flood pattern. So you've all seen the outdoor, your outdoor lights in that. Floodlights. Like your floodlights. Yeah. They flood the area with light. Right. A lot of these light bars are just that. Thus, not legal for the road. They are legal for off-road use only. Now... That being said, I'll read what the state has to say on them. Okay. It says, auxiliary driving lamps and fog lamps. Auxiliary driving lamps and fog lamps may be installed on a passenger vehicle or light truck if the lamps comply to the following. One, auxiliary driving lamps shall not be substituted for headlamps. Auxiliary driving lamps may only be used with high beam headlamps. So how does that so they have to be wired into the high beams? So into the high beams. Okay. So right there, your light bars could possibly be on because they could be wired into the high beam headlamps. But how many people do you pass on the road to have them wired into the high beam headlamps? I pro- yeah, probably not many. Fog lamps may not be substituted for headlamps. That's not point number two. Number three. Auxiliary driving lamps and fog lamps shall be mounted on the front spaced at least at least 20 inches apart from center to center and at a height of no more than 42 inches above a level surface upon which the vehicle stands nor lower than the lowest chassis part. Rear fog lamps, if originally installed, are offered as optional equipment are acceptable. Okay. So, That's right like here, OE stuff. Yep. But the very first part of this, the auxiliary driving lamps and fog lamps shall be mounted to the front. It's plural. Spaced at least 20 inches apart from center to center. Okay. So, a single light bar on the front, not legal. Okay. Because the wording here is plural. There has to be two. Okay. Now, if you put two on there. 20 inches apart. 20 inches apart. From center. From center. We have a possibility. And they're wired into the high beams. They're wired into the high beams. Okay. Now, We're getting fog, there. fog lamps are going to be wired into the low beams, but fog lamps need to cast downward because okay. there's rules on how high fog lamps can cast light. Okay. So, auxiliary driving lamps and fog lamps shall be aimed when the vehicle and the lamp assembly are in the straight ahead position with the beam not above the horizontal center line of a lamp at 25 feet. So that's the headlight aiming machine so, that you guys use. Yep. So this would be our headlight aiming machine would take care of this. But if you wanted to do it on your own, what you need to have is a level spot, and you have to be 25 feet back from that from a wall on a level on a level field, and you want to measure at the center of that lamp. And when that lamp is on, it cannot shine any higher than however high it is on the vehicle. That's essentially okay. what's that saying. So it has At to be cast feet, down just a little bit. It has to be cast bit. downward. Okay. Downward so, angle. Downward angle. The vehicle specified under this chapter may only have one pair of approved auxiliary driving lamps and fog lamps. 
Okay. So that means you can have fog lamps and you can have you can have fog lamps and you can have driving lamps. But they have to be aimed correctly. Okay. So and then it goes into um snow plow stuff. So what we're looking at here with a lot of these single big single light bars, they don't pass because the state says it's not a it's not an on road approved light. Right. Because okay. it's casting it's a single lamp and it's, it's casting single, incorrectly. Yes. Okay. So big bars don't pass. Now, later on in here, there is a subject with um, lighting requirements for off road mounted lights, which this would be considered then, and they have to be covered at all right. times when operating on the highway. I was actually so, going to go into that next. Now, what happens? Because you see everybody running around with them, right? Mm -hmm. What's happening is a lot of shops don't want to fail people for inspection for them, mm -hmm. flat out. They yeah. don't want to fail them. Sure. Because they don't want to make their customer mad. Secondly, the state police aren't doing anything about it. Because no. they're not enforcing it. Yeah. So, and it's their job to enforce motor vehicle standards. Mm-hmm. And there's another group, which is the group that watches over us as a as um, state inspection stations to make sure we're doing the right thing, that will go out and check this stuff, but they're kind of tied with their hands to enforce any of this stuff. Okay. Because it's not coming down from the government to enforce it. Right. Now, if you had this stuff on a truck that would get a, got inspected by the Department of Transportation. Like any trucker listening to this is probably like, you know, probably like I uh, I've talked to my dad about this because he has a CDL and mm -hmm. drives big truck mm -hmm. and he's asked me questions about this very same stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said he goes, "You know, this stuff I would, you know, if I was driving my big truck with this kind of stuff done to it, I wouldn't make it through a DOT inspection and I'd right. have fines like crazy. Right. You know, what's the deal? I said, well, that's the DOT state police officer right. issuing that. Which is different. I said, but your other police officers, they just don't want to enforce it. Well, and then that puts people like us in a tough spot where we're like, okay, these light bars are like, mm. so, I mean, yeah. if you have the light bars and you take so, it to a place for inspection, all you have to do, it's really simple. Go to Lowe's or Home Depot Get one of those insulators, a pipe insulator, <clears throat> cut it to the length, stick it over it, put a put a zip tie around it, and it passes. Yep. It's really simple. And at our place, we will put one on for you, yes. and we just tell you to hold on to it. Yeah. And we take just, a picture with it. Whatever you do when you leave, I have a picture of it covered. Yep. And you know what? It passed. It had a cover on it when it was in. It had a cover on it. So, so yeah, whatever it, you do once once it leaves here, I at least have the picture that says, yep, this is how it looked when I looked at it. Yep. So, it passed. And guys do that, too, with these crazy lifted trucks because there's rules on bumper, on how high up a bumper, bumper can heights. be. Mm -hmm. So they'll go and put really small tires on it and take it in for inspection. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot leg day. Yeah. So to <laughs> kind of like bring it down. So and the other thing that um, my dad was kind of expressing interest about was these pickup trucks with the tires sticking out past the fenders. Mm. Because mm -hmm. you can only have a, I, I'm not sure if it's a quarter or a half an inch of tire sticking out past a fender. And that is a DOT law. That is a federal law. That's not even a state law. Okay. So when these guys have the tires sticking out like a foot past defenders, it's not legal in any state. But law enforcement doesn't feel like enforcing it. So. Yeah. Well, they can have the tires stick out, but if they have additional fender skirts on that cover them, exactly. that, that passes. They have to be covered. Yep. So just have like the yep. bolt-on fender skirts. That, that's perfectly so, fine. So there's plenty of stuff wrapped around this, and it's, you know, it comes down to who wants to enforce what. Yeah. And, you know, I my driver's license is attached to our state safety inspection license. Right. So... Um, if we, if one of my guys does something wrong, I can lose my driver's license. Right. So Which I, I just don't want to, 
I, I'd like my driver's license. <laughs> I'd like to be able to drive independently. I'd like to be able to drive, but, <laughs> you know, we do. I, 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 the, our inspector comes in to check up on us, and he's like, how you doing? He wants to talk football. We talk football. I say, hey, did I mess anything up? It's usually, no, you're good. I'm just here. I'm going to make sure your paperwork's in order. You got all your insurances you need. Hey, great. Have a nice have, day. Have a nice day. That's how we like our inspections. Exactly. Thanks. Everything good? Yes, yes. Okay. Super. Didn't have any complaints about me? Awesome. <laughs> all right. So do you want to take a break and then we'll talk to... Yeah, we'll let's... talk to Jim and then we'll talk to George. Yeah. So let's take a break and we'll talk to Jim when we get back. Uh, give us a call, 610-374-8800, 888 and we'll be right back. We're back with more Idle Talk with Tom and Ashley from King's Auto Repair. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ashley. And I'm Tom. And let's talk to Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. Hey, I I got a, a, an 03 Mercury. Okay. Monquise. And uh, about a month ago, maybe not quite a month ago, the, the cable that controls the, the transmission broke. Okay. So I got it fixed. And I drove it about three or four days, and then this transmission started to slip. Mm. Is that, could that still be uh, the problem with the, with the, uh, the tra- with the cable, or is the transmission shot? It works in reverse, but it don't, I barely got it home. Oh, man. Uh, well, it's probably not with the cable, okay. because that cable, uh, Basically, as long as it's set up right and it, you... It worked good for three or four days. Yeah, and the car starts, so everything is is where it should be. Yes. Um, so I'm going to tell you the transmission shot, and it's probably just, it has nothing to do with the cable. It, just um, happened to be coincidental. Yeah. <laughs> That's just not happen- what I wanted to hear, but... <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> well, Why? probably... Um, I know a little bit about those. Uh, there's a a drum in the in those transmissions that cracks and causes that. So okay. that's why I was going to say it's probably uh, better to do a whole transmission in that because when you start getting into replacing the actual metal parts inside, it gets expensive really quick. So yeah, it's probably less it expensive just, to just take one out and put one in that's already been yeah. redone. If it were just the clutches, I would say, you know, it'd probably be less expensive to rebuild it. But if it actually has like a cracked so metal piece in You wouldn't in take there, it to a transmission place and well, get, it, you can. get it fixed? Or? Yeah, you can. You can, absolutely. But they might tell you, uh, you know, it might be, I'm just telling, I'm, I'll preface it with, they might tell you that, it might be more cost effective to put another one in than oh, okay. rebuild it. Instead so, of doing like, you kind of do what I call exploratory surgery, where mm-hmm. you start taking things apart and oh, we need this, oh, we need that, oh, we need that, you know. And so it's we a little can... bit like rebuild motors. There's companies that specialize in right. that, and then yeah. they just swap yep. them back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, they just take one out and they put the new one in, and it's already been rebuilt with all the new mm-hmm. guts. Okay. So instead yeah. of kind of piecemealing and, it back together, and those are okay. pretty, those are pretty solid transmissions, except for that that. Oh, it part. has two hundred and some thousand on. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but, you did you did well. Okay, you were talking about inspections. Mm-hmm. In fifty five, I had a glass pack on my fifty five Mercury, right? Mm-hmm. And the cops were on you like flies on mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Today you got the guys running around with the pickups with no pipes, with, with, yeah. with no mm-hmm. mufflers on, and the and the Hondas are almost break your eardrum, <laughs> and nobody seems to do nothing. Nope. I'm just as frustrated about it as you are. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I thought of, you know. Yeah, there's a but, guy boy, that they were they were really hot on glass packs. Uh-huh. Yeah, in well, the 50s. it was it was kind of that was kind of a new a new thing too. So. They probably well, wanted to be all over it. That was before it. the cutouts. My dad talked mm. about the cutouts. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and they used to, he said they used to see who, they used to argue who, which cutout was the best that made the most, most dust. Because <laughs> they had nice. dirt roads. Nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. Okay, thanks for your, yep. thanks for your advice. No Absolutely, problem. Thanks, Jim. Jim. Enjoy okay. your pre- you cut him off. Oh. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Elon was like too quick on. 
<laughs> All right. Quick, quick draw McGraw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to stick. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be okay. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> All right, let's talk to George. Hi, George. Hi, George. Good evening, ma'am, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you've invoked a memory. Ah. The, some, uh, regarding inspection, mm-hmm. that has been um, on my mind since the uh, late 60s, early 70s, so maybe you can answer this question. Mm-hmm. My parents had a 66 Fury 3 station wagon. Okay. They would take it to one place two blocks away for, uh, what do you call, uh, inspection. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we go to the next town, get the gasoline, uh, the, the gas station where our cousin worked. He'd give us a, uh, a little decal. We put it on the rear driver's side window of the uh, cargo area. Okay. Come for inspection, gas station two blocks away. We take it off. Hmm. Uh, why would they? I realize this is before, long before oh, you were even gosh. born, but why? So back in the day, you had to get your car inspected twice a year, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, there's been a lot of things that has changed, George. That I, 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 oh, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that. Yeah, I was gonna say. I have no idea. I, we'd I, have to see what the decal looked like I in bet, order to figure that out. You know what? I will dig up an old inspection manual because oh. I'm sure I have one around because they. They recently changed the inspection manual, like 2018, I think. Yeah. They they updated it, but I think it was the same from the 70s up till 2018. So, so they gave you a decal where you got your inspection that you put on the driver's side rear? Well, no. This was a uh, you, the decal was put on the, uh, on, on the, uh, the inspection st- sticker was put on the front left window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Windshield. Uh-huh. Yes, you got it twice a year. Yeah. You got it February and August. Okay. The other gas station would give a decal of the U.S. flag, you know, waving in the wind. Yeah. It was, it was you know, trans, translucent. Yeah. Trans- and, and I would put it on the rear cargo oh, window. Oh, okay. I, now I know. I know. Okay. So every time, you know, so every six months, I would go out to visit my cousin at, at his gas station say hello with him, have a soda and, and a something, you know, piece slice of pizza. I was a little kid. Spent my allowance money with my cousin. Uh-huh. And and got a new sticker, put it in the same place. Six months later, the other guy, the inspection is you follow me? Yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. As it has to do with the inspection and I'm I'm scrolling for the wording here and they may have changed that. I think that's one of the things they changed because they used to have a thing about glass and stickers on the glass and that would be what it why they scraped it off. Mm. It yeah. Um I'm looking it Didn't make any sense for me for interrupting that. It did even as a as an adult 55 years later it didn't make any sense to me because my father couldn't even look out that window. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. I don't know. All Let's right. we'll look into it and we'll see if we can. Ma- we probably here, won't here find we go. it. Oh, oh, here oh, we go. Oh, oh, here we okay. go. Here okay. we go. Here we go. A sign, poster, or other material whose design prevents a driver from seeing through the material that extends more than three and a half inches from the lowest exposed portion of the rear window. Rear side windows or rear wings of a passenger car. So you're supposed to reject it if any of that is there. Hmm. So your American flag sticker that you used to put on there, he used to scrape it off because of that. So it didn't it, it didn't pass inspection. Exactly. Even though you sat in the seat and you looked out the rear view, you looked in the rear view mirror and it blocked absolutely nothing. So, but, yeah, it, but from, people couldn't see. It, it reads as though you can't see in either. Yeah. So it obscures a driver's clear view of the highway. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. So I, I'm not complaining to you by yeah. any means. Yeah. I well, it's just point. just the it's just what the manual says. A two by three sticker that went on the bottom mm-hmm. from the inside perspective of the tail of the uh, cargo area of a big you know tank of a car. 
on the driver's side, yeah. There's no way in, in something yep. or, or high water my father could have even seen out that window. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. That's that's he was just following the letter of the law, so but, yeah, but then nowadays you see all sorts of stickers going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, I have a sticker on my car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't blame me. I put it for somebody else's last one I saw. Okay. See ya. Tra- Bye. Thanks, George. Right, thanks. Bye. Yep. Let's take a break, and we're taking your call, 610-374-8800, We can probably take one more and, call because it's coming up on and the And I got the, the inspection hour. manual up. So oh, man, if anyone has any more inspection and, questions. Yep, I got the inspection <laughs> manual up here. <laughs> Looking for I'm, it. I'm, I'm ready to roll. Okay, we'll be right back. And now let's get back to Tom and Ashley with Idle Talk from King's Auto Repair. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ashley. And I'm Tom. And we are here at 830 AM WEU. We are from King's Auto Repair in beautiful, scenic West Reading, Penn Avenue. And I'm paging through the publication 45 here, and I'm trying not to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so did you want to talk about maintenance again? Like, I wanted yeah, to talk we about... Yeah, can circle a, back. I wanted to talk about the severe duty maintenance schedule. That is kind of a farce. The, the one that I found up, the one that I found today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's kind of... Because I was searching for something else, and I came across this severe duty... Um, uh, oh, goodness. It's not going to give me the... I'm having a hard time opening this. It's like... Oh, well, that's me... because it's really long. Yeah, it's, it's like 500 pages. So, anyway, I was actually doing some research for... Um, for the show and I knew we have one of these cars that comes in it's an Infiniti QX50 and it has what the engine in it is a variable displacement engine and what that means is your standard engine when you turn it over one time it will displace X amount of air so usually that is now said in liters. So if you have a three liter engine, it will actually, if you were to seal it off and have valves in it that it only went one way, it would displace three li- three liters of air every time it turned. So this engine actually can change the amount that it uh, of air that it actually moves in and out of the engine by varying how far the piston goes up and down. So it's a very advanced engine. It's kind of some new technology. And I knew it took some odd oil, and that's why I wanted to find it. So we got into, I'm just talking to Ashley, and I'm looking at this, and this basically, um, the recommended maintenance for it. And... They had a uh, piece in there that specified what was um, what was uh, here we go, se- severe maintenance, severe duty, severe duty, and what was not severe duty. So I am almost to it, Ashley. What, I didn't, what right here it is. is. Okay, right okay, here okay, it okay, is. Okay. I like downloaded it too. <laughs> But severe duty. So there's two different maintenance schedules that that sometimes a, a vehicle manufacturer will put out, and they'll say if it's a light duty um, vehicle, then you know you can use this maintenance schedule. If it's considered extreme, I'm air quoting extreme, then you have to go with this maintenance your, schedule. Yeah, your severe or extreme but, maintenance and schedule. When I think of extreme or severe, I think of like. Dusty road, lots of dusty roads, lots of mountains, lots the Baja of Baja One Thousand, Baja One Thousand, lots they're of out jumps. There in the you know, desert like yeah, and they're doing jumps. I'm just and... kidding, not no jumps. Um, but I think of like high altitude to me would be severe duty because there's less um, oxygen, you mm-hmm. know, less uh, the air is thinner. But actually, light duty is considered city driving, flat with moderate hills, no towing or heavy loads, and no extended engine idling. And freeway driving. So, like, highway driving at, like, 55 miles an hour, no stopping, no starting. You get on the highway, you drive, and then you get to your destination and stop. Mm -hmm. Like, that's considered light. So, extreme duty, and this is for Infinity, is 
repeated short trips of less than five miles. I know lots of people that do that. Repeated short trips of less than 10 miles with outside temperatures remaining below freezing, which is kind of an important because the car that doesn't warm up all the time mm -hmm. the whole way. Operating in hot weather and stop and go rush hour traffic. Extensive idling or low sleep speed driving for long distances, such as police taxi, door-to-door -door delivery use, or going in traffic, like, you know, if Slow, you're crawling along in along traffic. In traffic. You, I mean, because that happens all over the place. Towing a trailer, using a caravan or a t car top carrier, because that's extra mm -hmm. weight for the vehicle. Driving with frequent use of braking or mountainous or in mountainous areas and sustained high speed driving. So those are all considered extreme. So yeah. ask ask yourself if you do any one of these in in any month. Yeah. And you probably do a couple of them. You mm -hmm. know, short trips, um, cold cold conditions, hot uh, stop and go. I mean, that's all. Mm -hmm. Ex considered extreme yeah and we've had callers that have called in and i can't remember her name off the top of her head but uh i know her car was in an accident and she'll probably call and uh but she did really long oil changes and i'd be willing to bet she did a lot of highway driving most likely with that car yeah where it wasn't shifting and it was running at a steady speed right which was a lot different than you know driving in the city or driving stop and go traffic all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. Uh, where you're always on and off the gas, mm -hmm. so or driving up and down, you know, large hills or whatever the the list that Ashley just read off there. So, you know, we started looking at the severity. You know, if you're following the severe maintenance schedule, because they have the standard maintenance and then they have the severe maintenance schedule here, and they say to change the change oil every seventy five hundred miles. But the thing I found interesting was at 7,500 miles on their severe maintenance, they actually want you to replace the brake fluid. Which I found fascinating at 7,500 70, miles. Yeah, at 7,500 miles. Or 12 months. Now, wow. Yeah. This is infinity, this what is we're infinity. talking about specifically. And most of them I've actually seen that they're supposed to they're calling for the brake fluid to be replaced at like 15 to 20,000. And I thought that was a little excessive too, because, you know, okay, 15,000, you've had it a year and a half. Not much water is going to get into that system in that amount of time. It's a, I, it's going to yeah. be kind of hard. Yeah. So now I'd be saying, you know, maybe like two to three years, you're talking 30,000 miles. Now you might start seeing some water in it. You know, and it's starting to degrade and these newer cars with the electronic braking and that, you know, they might not have the same, the, they, they're probably not going to have the same braking that if it had the clean fluid in it. And yeah. I think that is what and why the recommendations made okay. this often, which I thought was every 7,500 miles, they're telling you to change the brake fluid in this car. Yeah. And I thought that is crazy yeah that's kind of fascinating but i i find it interesting that they're they're saying that but here's the other thing with the 7500 uh mile maintenance um that means i have to do math i can't just count by fives no. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so wait okay 75 15, times two times three times, fifteen thousand. Yeah. i can't do it I'm not. I'm not was an English major. I didn't have to. Didn't have to do. Five. Didn't have to do math one to in order to graduate exactly. from college. Exactly. Why? Why do you have to make it hard? I know. Right? Just make it five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's so, easier to remember. Yeah. So I mean, it's just I and with these the this engine technology, the, this new variable variable displacement engine technology, I just don't trust that extra. 2,500 miles to be okay kind of long term for this engine. Well, it's funny though because they have very strict requirements on their oil though to be able to okay. do this. But and if they have strict requirements on mm -hmm. the oil, they should really have strict requirements on the oil changes and making sure it's done at the correct interval. Yes. So the oil ch the oil they they call for this car is not inexpensive. Okay. So if you have one of these, you probably got sticker shock when you did the oil change on it. Um, the 
it calls for what they call Nissan ester oil. Okay. Um, and it's what they use in a lot of their high end cars. And the uh, 350 and 370Zs before this called for this oil, mm-hmm. and they ended up with all kinds of camshaft problems oh, okay. from people not using the correct oil. Oh, so okay. um, pretty much everybody in the car world knows that if you do, if it calls for this oil, you need to use this oil or uh, you will have problems. And it won't be right away. You know, it'll be down the road a little bit. But pretty much the there's two places you can buy this oil. Maybe somebody has come out with their own now, too, to add to this. But Nissan was one, and the other was the Pennzoil Platinum Synthetic. Okay. It was so, the, other pla- the other place to get it, and then you were talking like $10 a quart. Shazam. For, yeah. Shazam. So you're talking a little bit of money for to do the oil changes on them. But if you don't use it, the car's not going to run right. And it will be a um, giant pile of metal that you can recycle way you know, too early. That just, we need to talk about warranty stuff. Every time yep. I say we need to talk about warranty stuff, then we get derailed and we talk about stuff. But, but that's a really good warranty mm-hmm. thing to talk about. Yep. It, well, I guess we'll get and, into that next yep. week. And I actually had a story to go with that too. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump we into get that it, next we week. We get yeah. into that next week with yeah. some warranty stuff and oil changes. Yeah. Yay, oil changes. The yeah. greatest, the single most cheapest thing you can do to prolong the life of your vehicle. Yeah, exactly. So, all righty. Well, that is our show tonight. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you're out on Facebook, be nice to each other. Wear your seatbelts. And I'm going to take my soapbox and go home now. Okay. And Thank it's going to be kind of scary weather tomorrow. So be careful out there. Thank you very much. And good night. <laughs>